Trigger point therapy has been around for many, many years now. It became popular in the 1960s and it was made popular by a physician called Jeanette Travell. She was actually the personal physician for John F. Kennedy and she wrote some definitive text on it and she studied all these muscles and found that muscles give you pain in the localized area but they also give you pain somewhere else. But somehow this knowledge got lost and nowadays it's not really practiced widely. Not many physicians, not many health professionals even know that this therapy exists and the potential of it. And I came across it because I was doing acupuncture for pain related therapy and then somehow I stumbled upon this therapy and then I somehow jumped into it and learned more about it. I did some extra courses of it and I was taught by people that had taught by Jeanette Travell, they're out in Washington DC. And thank God they have continued to teach this therapy. I've been doing it for the last 10 years and I've got fantastic results and really, really happy with the results at the moment. I hope you find the same results as well. What I thought I'll teach you today a little bit about is what is trigger point and how does it really work. Now trigger points are found in all the muscles in the body, but at certain times when you get injured, these trigger points become more sensitive or extra tender. So by just putting a little pressure on it, you feel that there's some sensitivity on it. But during, during the studies that were done on it, it shows that you have to have a certain pressure to give you pain. Now, the way people studied it actually is that when they put certain pressure on it, they realized that there were certain parts of the body that would become painful. And that's how they mapped out this entire trigger point therapy. For example, a lot of people have experienced headaches and pain along the scalp area. And this area here is where you feel the pain. But the problem really is this trapezius muscle, which is on the upper part of the shoulder blade. Very commonly you would know that and then you feel, oh, this is very tight here and then you may feel here. So just by treating the muscle here and deactivating this point, this pain gets better. Although you experience pain here, the problem is right here. So that's a common one. The other common ones in patients that have headaches are these muscles here. Look at these muscles at the base of the skull. They call the suboccipitalis. And these small muscles give you a pain radiation pattern like this here. So you feel pain at the back of the head and in the temporal area. So again, by treating these muscles here, this pain gets better. Same with this muscle at the back of the scalp on top here. A common muscle that people get involved when they have a whiplash injury is this front muscle of the neck called the sternocleidomastoid. Now look at this pain radiation pattern here. That's along all these lines here, along the cheek, along the side of the scalp, along behind the eye. But this is a little special muscle. Sometimes you get pain on the other side as well, but this is one of the very, very few muscles that give you pain on the other side as well. But all you have to do to treat it is put a needle into these trigger points and put a little bit of local anesthetic. When I treat it, I just put one point in it and it seems to work. I don't even have to do multiple points. It's amazing just by putting one needle in it, how it may deactivate this muscle and this entire pain part gets relaxed. Now I'm gonna move on to the shoulder muscles as well. A lot of people come in with shoulder muscle problem and complain of pain in the upper arm. But look at this muscle, it's called the supraspinatus muscle. It lies behind the clavicle. And it's a very, very small muscle here, you can see here. But look at the pain radiation pattern. So people get pain in the upper arm and they think, oh, I got a problem here in my deltoid muscle or my bicerebral tendon is in the problem. But really the problem really is the supraspinatus muscle. All I have to do is put a needle into it, put a few drops of local anesthetic, and that releases the trigger point. Similar to this, when you get pain, in this upper back muscles. That muscle is called the levator scapula and that's a muscle that attaches onto the scapula, runs at the back here. Again, by look at the pain radiation pattern here. This is very, very common among everybody. The, this pain that's in this inner part of the scapula. Just by treating these muscles, these become deactivated. Just while we're talking of the shoulder, so now I'm gonna move on to the shoulder. So these muscles here, look at this pain radiation pain pattern, this blue as well, it's called the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus lies on that scapular blade right there, but its pain radiation pattern is all the way down the arm. A lot of people commonly confuse this with nerve pain, but this is just a muscle. Just by deactivating this muscle, this entire pain gets better as well. So commonly, so once you know these pain, pain radiation patterns, then it's easy to treat it. So when I ask you questions, ask you, where's your pain? Then it gives me an idea what type of pain radiation pattern you have. 
Let's go to the low back. Now, commonly people have pain going down the leg. And most people commonly assume that this is sciatica. And that seems to be the common one. And most people would say that there's a pinch nerve. But muscles can also give you pain going down the arm, or going down the leg as well. And they mimic sciatica. So look at this common muscle you call the piriformis. It's a small muscle attaching onto the sacrum, onto the hip. That's called the piriformis. Look at its pain radiation pattern all the way down. It goes even up to the heel, back of the leg and back of the hamstrings as well. Just by putting a needle in there, deactivating the piriformis, this pain gets better. And over time, the muscle gets less and less symptoms. So it does need a few treatment, but once it gets better, it feels much better. Tensor fascia lata, the same thing as well. It's a small muscle just on top, on the side of the hip, and look at its pain radiation pattern as well. The two main muscles is this gluteus minimus and the gluteus medius. And they are the very small muscles of the hip just lying on the side. Look how small this muscle really is, just those fibers. But look at its pain radiation pattern. It goes all the way to the back of the leg, to the back of the calf. This one goes to on the side of the leg, coming to the side as well. Commonly, you can get trigger points along these side muscles as well, and they also need to be deactivated as well because they become secondary trigger points. So this, this entire chart is what Travel came with, and there's many other muscles as well, which, which you can talk about as well. But this forms the basis of trigger point therapy.